one over Zimbabwe Schwartz. That's it for this edition of American Gladiators. Here's a preview of some of the action you'll be seeing next week. Next week, four new contenders chosen from around the country test their personal best against the American Gladiators. Among them, Zap, Nitro, Gemini, Laser, and Lace. Be with us for the battle on the next American Gladiators. That's it for this edition of American Gladiators. For Todd Christensen, I'm Mike Adamley. So long, and we'll see you next week. Hollywood. This is American Gladiators. Selected from a national athletic search, 22 men and women have come to Hollywood to wage battle against our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champion. Now here are your American Gladiators, Nitro, Lace, Blade, Gemini, Titan, Zap, Gold, Laser, your American Gladiator. For American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Todd Christensen. Hi, everyone. Glad you could join us for this second edition of American Gladiators competition. And once again, we have chosen an outstanding group of contenders from around the country, very athletically gifted contenders. And the Gladiators, well, they're bigger and badder than ever. And we have two more this time around. And Todd, during your glory days with the Raiders, you played with a lot of bad hombres. But how do these Gladiators compare to some of your ex-teammates? Mike, to be honest, I'm glad they're not around when I was there. I might have lost my job. But it's not just the Gladiators. The competitors are intense and they want to win. Well, the contenders promise to put their best foot forward and the gladiators promise us some titanic confrontations. All right, let's meet today's contenders. In the women's competition, please welcome Joni Podesta from Santa Monica, California, a fitness camp director. And her opponent, Gina Harrison from Pittsburgh, an aerobics instructor. In the men's event, Please welcome Carl Allen of La Mesa, California, a personal fitness trainer. And his opponent, Rick Perks, a native of St. Louis who works as a paper handler. Contenders, best of luck. Let the games begin. And Todd, I will see you later. This is how our show works. The contenders compete against each other in seven events that involve our American gladiators. The object of each contender is to earn as many points as possible in the confrontations with the gladiators. The men's and women's contender with the most points after seven events automatically advances to the next round of competition and one step closer to our championship final. Coming up now, the first event, Powerball. And here's Todd to tell you all about it. Powerball is a 45-second contest of contact and strength in which both contenders compete simultaneously in an effort to score as many goals as possible within that time limit. Each contender starts off at opposite ends of the floor and must take a ball from alternate buckets after each attempt at a goal. Both contenders may score in any one of five containers. Each of the outer baskets is worth one point and the center container is worth two points. What makes this event difficult is these three American gladiators whose job it is to stop them. 
And Rick Herbst is going to need all the power he can muster, just 170 pounds. He's a Lilliputian against those gladiators. Well, you know, Carl, at 5 foot 11, 200 pounds is a little bit larger, but remember out there, Mike, there's about 750 pounds worth of gladiators they're going to have to contend with. Ready? Gladiators in Referee position. Referee Bob McElwee about to give the starting whistle. Once again, 45 seconds the contenders have to score as many goals as they can. Carl made a good move there, but he wasn't able to get in the bucket. There he goes. You can see that quickness being displayed early by Carl Allen. Rick Herbst, meanwhile, having a tough time, and Carl gets a sandwich job from Gemini and Titan. It's tough sometimes when you get double team, and right now it looks like they're choosing to double team Carl, and Rick has got his hands full of some of these big bodies out here. Carl looks like he's limping a little bit, too, uh, Mike. And Rick, not only small, he doesn't quite have the quickness that Carl Allen does, so he is really having a tough time trying to score out there as Gemini uh, stops that thrust towards the goal. Well, five seconds in running now, it appears that uh, the scoring hasn't been that proficient. In fact, I only see one ball in the bucket. Down goes Rick again, and that's it. Only one goal scored, as you mentioned, that by Carl Allen, who drops to both knees and literally crawls off the playing surface. Here it is one more time. Gemini on top of Carl Allen. Watch his right knee and ankle. There it goes. He may have sprained it. Here's Todd. Carl, looks like a situation out there where they're very serious. They're really hitting out there, aren't they? Oh, yes. There's right no question there. about that. Yeah. No question about that. Oh, they're big or strong. Looks to me like you might have sprained your ankle a little bit. Are you going to be okay? I think I'll be fine. Thanks, Todd. What's that blood I see in your teeth, babe? My lip. <laughs> <laughs> getting tough out there, aren't they? It's real tough. It is. All right. The one thing that I want to say is that one ball is too many for the American Gladiators, and I'm not happy with it, but we will be back. And with the force of my American Gladiator fans behind me, we will be back. Make no mistake, these American Gladiators take a lot of pride in Powerball. So after this first event in our men's preliminary round between Carl Allen and Rick Herbst, Carl Allen with a 1-0 lead, he scored the only goal in their Powerball matchup. The women are next in their first event. It's something we call the wall, so grab the pitons and harness yourself in. It's going to be fun to watch. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women await their first event. It's called The Wall. Here's Todd with an explanation. In this event, our contenders have two minutes to scale this 32-foot wall while the gladiators follow in pursuit. The first contender who makes it to the top will earn 10 points, and if the second contender can make it as well, she will earn 5 points. If either contender can reach the 32-foot peak, then the contender who scaled the higher level will take away 5 points. And one of our contenders in this preliminary round, Joni Podesta from Santa Monica, California. She is a railroad handcar champion. We'll try to explain what that is a little bit later. She'll be chased up the wall by Blaze. And Gina Harrison, at 5 foot 10 inches tall and native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is an aerobics instructor, former track star at Dartmouth. And she will be trailed by the infamous Zap, who, as you get a view up the 32-foot edifice from her helmet cam, and they're set to go. And we should keep in mind the contenders have a 10-second head start up the wall until the gladiators can begin their climb. Joni Podesta in the blue, Gina Harrison in the red. On the right of your screen, a lot of upper body strength involved. And here come the gladiators. Oh, it looks like, oh, Joni couldn't quite hang on. It appears that her hands slipped off, and now it's a race between Zap and Gina. Right now, Gina's assured herself of five points just by being able to stay on the wall, but it looks like she wants a little bit more than that. Well, Zap is usually very relentless in her pursuit. Last week, she dragged down Susan Farwell after Susan had that 10-second head start. She's trying to close in on Gina now. You can see the view from helmet cam, but Gina is on her way to the top. She's going to make it. Gina hasn't been too terribly intimidated by Zap. She just marched her way up to the top, and she made it 10 points richer and more than a little bit excited. Gina made it to the top in 54 seconds. Meanwhile, this was the fate of Joni Podesta. Here's Todd with Gina. Gina, everybody's been complaining about the fact that it's so tough to get up there, but it didn't look like there was any sweat for you. That was great. No, you, I just was trying to climb, watch my feet, and go for, just get it up there. I didn't like the fact that she was right behind me. It's tough on the manicure, but it looked to me like it was no sweat. I guess I just did it. It felt great. All right, 10 points. Gina can smile for now, but 10 points, not an insurmountable lead. 
Six more events to come. Now, after one event for the men, Carl Allen leads Rick Herbst 1 0. But the wall is an event that Rick should do well in, given his wiry stature 170 pounds and very strong in the upper body. He'll be chased by Laser. And Carl, at over 200 pounds, is going to have a little bit more of a struggle. And of course, with Nitro chasing him, Nitro always intense, it's going to be a rough climb. Once again, the contenders have two minutes to scale this 32-foot wall. And unlike the women's event, the contenders have a 15-second head start over the Gladiators. Rick Herbst in the red, Carl Allen in the blue. Right now, they appear about even, Mike. Trying to get to the middle there to get some of the easier pockets. Nitro almost had Carl there, but Carl was able to shake him off. Twice. Great strength, great hand strength. Looks like Laser's got Rick, and sure enough, pulls him right off. Great shot from the helmet, Ken. Carl Allen slowly picking his way up, up this side of the wall. You know, Mike, it appears that at this point he's being very calculated. He doesn't want to lose the possible 10 points he has right here. And unless Nitro has some sort of burst of strength, he's going to make it all the way to the top. And I would guess, I don't have the clock in front of me, but I would guess in some sort of record time. Now here's Mike with Laser. Laser, you lived up to your nickname. You were lightning quick up there. I grew up in Montana. Climbed a lot of mountains, and I think that helped. Job so. well done, Laser. Thanks. Congratulations. All right. Nitro almost got his man as well, as Carl Allen had to shake him off not once, but on two different occasions, but he made it to the top. Carl, you know, this is one of those things that looks tough for a big guy, but you made it all the way up. Uh, I don't think size has much to do with it. Um, arm strength, legs, uh, speed, and mental concentration, I think, has a lot to do with it. So is Pikes Peak next for you? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not going for this, actually. Pikes Peak may not be next for Carl Allen, but he does earn 10 points. And after two events, he has an 11-0 lead over Rick Herbst. Now it's time to turn our attention to women's Powerball. They're ready for their second event. Joni Podesta versus Gina Harrison. I'm not exactly sure who would have an advantage in this event. I think that maybe Joni with a little bit more strength, upper body now, who they take on Lace, Zap, and Gold. But then again, you got to figure that Gina's All a little set. bit quick and wiry. Ready? I like her chances. Gladiators in position. Once again, referee Bob McAway. Here's the start of the match. Gina Harrison scores quickly, and Joni Podesta goes to that middle cylinder and scores there. Remember, any goals scored in the middle cylinder are worth two points. Double team on the side, Joni gets knocked out of bounds, and once the ball hits the ground, you have to recover and go to the other end, remember. As Joni gets one on the edge, and Gold takes down Gina. He's done a great job, Gold has. Zap, zap, whips Joni to the ground. Once again, Gold is really working over Gina Harrison. I thought only the men were physical, Mike. It <laughs> appears to me that the women have taken a page from them, and they're really knocking some bodies around here. Joni just keeps on going, keeps on scoring. Five seconds left. Ooh, body slam by Zap. And that is it in a rough, rough match. As you mentioned, Todd, the women taking a page from the men in Powerball. How rough was it? Just ask Joni Podesta after that slam by Zap. Here, Gina Harrison gets dragged down, and then Joni gets the double team from Zap and Lace. Jody, it looked to me like you're using your physicality out there. You're pretty aggressive. It was fun. And they were tough. <laughs> you don't by chance have, uh, I, Walter Payton's not your idol or anything, is he? No, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> <laughs> so it appears you did very well. Congratulations. Yes. Well, Joni also taught the Gladiators a thing or two. She won that match of Powerball 4-1, to one, but after two events, Gina Harrison has an 11-4 lead. When we return with more of the American Gladiators, it's time to break out the pugil sticks. It's the Joust coming up next. at Universal Studios Hollywood with more of the American Gladiators and let us now turn our attention to the men's joust where Carl Allen, the contender, about to do battle with Gemini. Carl's object is very simple right here. He simply wants to knock Gemini from his perch and get 10 points. If he gets knocked off, he receives none, but if he can maintain throughout the whole 30 seconds, he would receive five as a stalemate. But that's not even gonna happen. As Gemini knocks him from his perch in less than five seconds. It appeared that Carl and Gemini went off at the same time. Gemini has had some pugil stick training with some Marines prior to this competition, but this particular match is going to be decided by the referee. Here's Todd. 
We're here with Bob McElwee, and you know, there seemed to be some controversy out there. What happened, Bob? What was the final verdict? Todd, the contender, took his hands off of the pugil stick, which is clearly against the rules, and grabbed the stick of the gladiator. Therefore, the contender is disqualified, and the gladiator is victorious. Okay, thanks, Bob. Score one for the gladiator. So Gemini, always tough in the joust, wins by DQ over Carl Allen. And now it's Rick Kurtz's turn to see how he can do against the mighty Gemini. And this one is over in a hurry, as you might expect. Rick at a real disadvantage, quite frankly, just 170 pounds, and one swipe from Gemini, and that was all it took. Shot to the head there, a little push, another shot to the head, and that was it. Rick goes flying. Gemini, you've been working out with some Marines in your hand-to-hand -hand combat. It really showed these last two bouts. That's right. It helped me when I came over with a horizontal slash and I was going to come up on the second bout with a underbutt. And those are some of the techniques we were taught by the Marines, and they worked effectively for me. Score two for the Gladiators. He even's got the terminology down pat. So after three events, Carl Allen, 11 nothing over Rick Herbst, Gina Harrison, 11-4 over Joni Podesta right, after two position. events, and now it's their turn to joust as Joni goes up against Blaze. You know, Blaze looks a little frail compared to Joni. I'd have to think that Joni would have a little bit of an advantage in this event as they seem to just be punching one another right now, feeling each other out. Well, initially, Joni took Blaze's best shot, and then she came back doing a little counter-punching of her own and knocked Blaze off. Joni was able to keep her center of gravity. Right here, she takes a good left shot to the chin, but is able to keep her feet on the platform. Whereas now Joni gets in a shot to the head, a couple of more, and knocks Blaze right off the pedestal. Here's Mike. For a moment there, it looked like Blaze had you going. I was going off, yeah. <laughs> but I think I um, took advantage of her being a little bit off balance. But she still had me for a minute there. You've picked up 10 extra points. Yeah, I'm glad about that. I just got to keep that up. Now it's Gina Harrison's turn to step in against Blaze, and because of the 10 points that Joni just received, Gina is going to have to follow suit to maintain her lead in this competition. And right off the bat, she gets in two good shots with Blaze. But Blaze appears to be a little bit more determined this time around. She's getting aggressive and has Gina clear to the back of the edge. Has her hand... Oh, no. Blaze steps across the pedestal, and that automatically disqualifies her, and Gina is going to be the fortunate recipient of 10 points. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Right here, Blaze makes a critical mistake. Gina, there's an old adage in sports that uh, good competitors take advantage of their competitors' mistakes, and Blaze stepped over onto your pedestal, and she was disqualified. She was coming on strong, so uh, it was definitely a uh, help to me, because uh, you get hit with that thing in the head, and you're gone. <laughs> but if I, I'm glad. I'll take it any way I can get it. So both contenders get 10 points with a score now 21 to 14 in Gina's favor. After three events, Carl still leads Rick by the count of 11 to nothing as we prepare for our fourth event, the Assault. And Todd, Assault is our game of hit or be hit. One where the contender first takes aim at the gladiator with a crossbow. And if he misses there, he can continue to the second safe zone where a rocket launcher will be found. Safe zone number three offers a cannon. And as contenders get closer to the target at the fourth safe zone, they can take aim with a pistol. The fifth safe zone has three hand grenades. While Carl and Rick attempt to run between these zones, Nitro will be shooting at them with a cannon that fires tennis balls in excess of 100 miles an hour. They have 60 seconds to complete their mission. The mission to hit the target located above the gladiator. Rick made it safe enough to the first zone as he lines up the crossbow. But that shot was <laughs> less than extraordinary as now he's going to head to the second safe zone. A little bit quicker this time as he sets up the rocket launcher. Nitro's tough in this event. Well, ideally, you'd like to be patient and have the luxury of taking aim, but time is of the essence. You can see the clock in the right-hand corner of your screen. That's what Rick is working against. We should mention here, Mike, the fact that even if he is not able to hit the target, which, of course, the white is at 10 points and red is 7, if he is able to make it through the entire course without getting hit, then he will still be able to get 4 points. He's cut it close right now as it's ten, less than 10 seconds and counting. It's going to be interesting if he's able to make it. Four, three, two, one, and he dies. I can't tell from here if he's able to make it or not. Tough, tough run for Rick Hurst. Mike's with him at the finish line. These guys are big studs. And I, uh, I just, I'm a little guy and I want to give it my best shot against these big guys and see how I could do. And so far they're spanking me. Okay. But uh, hopefully, 
I can pull it out. I'm saying my prayers at this point in time. Don't think the event of assault is tough. Look at these hands and the calluses. But Rick, you did earn a draw and you finally got some points in this American Gladiator competition. Thank God. Well, this is definitely a struggle for Rick Herbst. Right there, we see an arrow that's way off. A rocket launcher just a little bit high. And now right here, a basketball that doesn't quite make its way to the hoop. The ball actually hits Nitro there. Boy, that was a well-earned four points. And now here's Nitro taking a few bows, getting ready for the next contender, which in this case is going to be Carl Allen. Nitro is a little bit disappointed in himself that he didn't hit Rick. He'll get his chance now against Carl Allen who leads Rick by seven points. Remember, he sprained his ankle during Powerball. It may be a problem for him here in terms of mobility. But you know, Mike, his ankle doesn't do the shooting. We're gonna have to see what he's like with his crossbow first. Well, he missed there, and now the mobility comes into play, and you can see he is limping noticeably. But once again, he's able to make it safe, and now he's going to line up the rocket launcher and see if he can expedite the process of this particular competition. I can't help but think, Mike, that if he can get it over, the sooner the better. He lines up the basketball right there. Looks like it got him right on the bicep, and Nitro knew it. Right away, he points it out. And ladies and gentlemen, there's no doubt about this one. Carl, sometimes the difference between victory and defeat, a matter of inches. Your shot with the rocket launcher missed by a matter of inches. Nitro was able to hit you in the hand by a matter of inches. That's right. That's correct. Uh, it was really good. I've slowed up just a little bit. My ankles bothered me a lot. Um, see if I can continue. See what happens. Okay, take care of the ankle. So as Nitro celebrates his victory, so can Rick Hurst, who finally finds his way onto the scoreboard with a draw on the assault. And after four events, Rick closes in on the lead of Carl Allen at 11 to 4. When we return on the American Gladiators, we'll have the human cannonball, as well as the eliminator. And coming up next, our women take aim on lace in the assault. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women now prepare for their fourth event, Assault. Gina Harrison leads Joni Podesta by seven. Joni will be up first going against Lace. She's a little like the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. She always gets her man, or in this case, woman in this event. She is tough with that cannon, Todd. She's Dudley Do-Right's version of Nell, Mike. She loves to shoot that gun. Joni's got her work cut out for her. She heads to the first safe zone, and so far, so good. Remember, she is working against a 60-second time clock that is now under 50. So time is of the essence. Arrow a little bit off to the side, and as you mentioned, Mike, she's got to hustle to get to the next safe zone. She's taking a little bit too much time right here. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Nice Back to the draw, drawing board there. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Shut that Come one on, out Joni. You got to go sometime Come here. Come on, Joni. You got to hustle. 20 and counting. There oh. is a time clock on the surface area, playing surface that the contenders can see, but apparently Joni hasn't. He's got to hope that this basketball or possibly the next one she can get there. No, that's going to be the last one she's going to get a shot at, I'm afraid. She's going to get the big eh. Oh, here it comes. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Time runs out on Joni Podesta and Lace is victorious and the crowd loves it. Yes, indeed. Lace is tough. You ran out of time. Was the clock in the back of your mind? Could you see yeah. it? I was going more for aim, I think, and I was trying to hit the target. Did you realize that you were running short on time? Uh, yeah, after the second station there, I did. So I, cut, I tried to speed it up a little bit. Bad strategy this time around, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nice effort, though. Thanks. Bad strategy or not, Joni was unable to even to make it to the last two safety zones. There you see the arrow missing by a considerable margin in the basketball. I guess in parlance you'd have to say that one was an air ball. As we set up now for Gina Harrison to compete once again against the inimitable Lace. And while Gina looks very intense, Lace is enjoying the adulation of the crowd. And I guess enjoying the adulation of the crowd so much that she wanted to get this over with. She had Gina's number right off the bat. That must have taken all of four seconds. She nails Gina right on the thigh. Gina, you think there's a tendency sometimes for the contenders to 
underestimate how fast those tennis balls travel, did you? Um, yeah, it hit. I think two of them came out, you know, right away, and I just didn't expect two. I was dodging the one, the other one got me, and it hurts. <laughs> okay, Gina, better luck next time around. There's no doubt here, Mike. On her way to the first safe zone, Lace guns Gina down. So after going two for two, Lace celebrates with her fans. Neither Gina nor Joni score an assault, and after four events, the scoreboard stays the same. The men now tackle our next event, Breakthrough and Conquer, with Carl Allen leading Rick Herbst by only seven points. Here's Todd with an explanation. Just as the name implies, this is a two-part event. In the first part, the contender has 15 yards in which to break through the Gladiators and score a touchdown. Whether or not a contender is successful in part one, he must continue on to part two, where a Gladiator awaits in the conquer circle. Here, a contender has 10 seconds in which to get any part of the Gladiator's body outside of a ring 14 feet in diameter. A contender victory in either one of these events is worth five points. Carl Allen is up first, and he'll draw a laser in the breakthrough portion of this event. Remember Carl nursing that tender, tender ankle, and then it'll be on the nitro in the conquer circle. Carl set. Oh, he heads straight out of bounds. He must really be hurting. Mike's down on the floor. Maybe he has an explanation. Just so the people know you didn't chicken out, you uh, sprained your ankle during Powerball. It has gotten progressively stiffer. Sometimes discretion is the better part of valor, and it seemed like a sound strategy. Rather than get disqualified, you just get knocked out of bounds, don't earn any points, but at least you can continue to compete. That's correct. Um, I'm listening to my uh, trainer. He's a good trainer. He's giving me sound advice. You've got the human cannonball and the eliminator left. It's quite possible, should your ankle hold up, that you could acquire enough points to move on to the quarterfinals. Is that your kind of thinking right now? That's correct. I'm trying to continue. I'd like to go ahead and continue and get this over with and then take care of my ankle. Painful? Very. Okay, hang in there, Carl. Well, hopefully Carl's condition will allow him to continue. In the meantime, Rick Herbst is ready to take on Laser in the breakthrough. And once again, his lack of size is a bit of a detriment as Laser is able to take him down, and he heads now to the conquer. And here, Todd, he's giving 45 pounds away to Nitro in Nitro's best event. Going for the double leg takedown. That didn't work. Nitro able to fend off his charge. But he got him there. He did. Rick pulled him out, and Nitro's not real happy about it. And Rick is ecstatic, as well he should be. What a tremendous victory for Rick Herbst. I'll tell you what, Nitro has stopped many a contender in that conquer circle. He did not stop Rick Herbst. Right here, Nitro seems like he's in control. But right at the last, a double leg takedown, pretty standard operating procedure in wrestling. Rick is able to get him right by the thigh and push him out. And Nitro's not able to withstand Rick Herbst. Just goes to show that perseverance can pay off. Now here's the jubilant Rick Herbst with Mike. Rick, I think you sold yourself short. You talked about how impressed you were by the Gladiators. I think Nitro has a, a right to be impressed by what you did in the Conqueror ring there. Well, tell you what, he's, he's a lot tougher in that circle than, everybody th than anybody would think. Uh, they made it a little bigger, and they're all big bad boys. Guy tackled me good, too. He drove me down, but, you know, I'm just hanging in there. I'm gonna give him my best shot, and hopefully a little guy might prevail. Has it been a disadvantage being 40 to 50 pounds lighter than some of these gladiators? You tell me. <laughs> uh, I, I came here knowing that they were big boys and I was giving a lot of weight away and uh, that's all right. I accepted the challenge in St. Louis, came out here, gave it my best shot, and they're proving to me that they're, they're studs. Okay, let's hear it. This man's a tough guy, Rick Herbst. Tough enough to earn five points in this preliminary breakthrough and conquer event and close the gap between himself and Carl Allen to only two points after five events at 11 to 9. And Todd, this is the view the contenders will get in the next event for the women, the Human Cannonball. And after four events, Gina Harrison with the seven-point lead. This event, quite simple. The object here is to knock the gladiators off those two pedestals. Each contender given three attempts, each successful attempt worth three points. Gina, we're up here on this precipice. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, I like this event. I, I, uh, I think I can get some power behind my swing, and uh, I'm going to go for all three of these. Is there a particular tack that you're going to take, a particular angle? Um, it's really, once you leap off of it, you just kind of got to let your body tuck in there and go with that weight. It's, it's kind of up to the swing. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you. And the swing's the thing in this event as Joni Podesta gets set to go. She'll be going against Blaze while Gina goes against Gold. Three, two, one. Each contender getting three attempts. Here comes the first one. 
Yes, the Daily Double. Both gold and blaze go down. The contenders one for one. Well, Gina, just as she said, was trying to get a good swing and get her body right in the midsection of gold, and it appears that that's exactly what she was able to do. Gold has a good center of gravity, but right there, she knocks her right from her feet. Joni, on the other hand, is able to take on a much too erect Blaze, who was knocked right off the pedestal. And Todd, here's Gemini telling Blaze that very thing. Get a little blow! Get down there, let's go! Get low, get down, and deliver a blow. Easier said than done. But if theater means anything, maybe she'll do better the next time. Now Zap takes a chance to get up on the pedestal and Gold two, moves over one. one. Well, Gold goes flying, but Zap doesn't budge. And Joni Podesta is two for two. Right here you can see on the right that Gina was no match for Zap. Zap's able to keep her center of gravity in balance, but Joni's able to knock Gold from her moorings. Zap getting the congratulations of her fellow gladiators and encouragement from Lace. As the third time is coming up, now with Blaze and Zap. And if Joni can go three for three, she would win an extra bonus point. She does not as Zap doesn't move. And while Zap accepts the congratulations from her fellow gladiators, no mean feat being able to stand up there two times in a row, Gina is able to knock Blaze from the top of the pedestal despite the coaching of Gemini. Joni, you can watch this event on television, which I'm sure you did last year watching American Gladiators, but until you get up on that platform for real, it's hard to describe what it's like, the human cannonball. Your description. It's kind of like being Tarzan and Jane and... Um, Jane in your case. Yeah. <laughs> or both. <laughs> anyway, and then you've just got to try to knock the other person off. You don't have much control over it. It's a little bit of luck and a little bit of determination, I think. And that, that last one, it was the irresistible force versus the immovable object. You were mighty tough up there, Zap. And you, too, you've had a complete changeover on this event. You're thinking, I think you were a little bit scared last year in the first edition of American Gladiators, and now you're rock steady up there. I think um, I owe it to the experience. Um, we're going to teach the other girls how to stay up there, too. So both women accumulate six points in human cannonball, and as a result, Gina continues to lead by seven. And when we come back, the men will take their swings at the gladiators in the human cannonball as well. Welcome back. This is American Gladiators, and we are ready for more action. Thanks, Mike. Rick, we're here, and the score is now 11 to 9. You're just a little ways behind. You know, you've been talking a little bit about having some problems with weight. Is there any particular strategy that you have now? Just going to try to get as high as I can, and uh, hopefully my velocity that I can uh, generate will be enough to knock him off. Gemini's a big boy. He looks like he's waiting for you. He's definitely big, and I'll give it my best shot. Okay, good luck. Thanks. Rick, of course, paired against Carl Allen, who'll be doing battle with Titan. Again, each contender given three attempts. Each successful attempt worth three points. Score the hat trick. You get a bonus point of one for a total of ten. working against Titan, he knocks him off. Rick, giving away some 50, 60 pounds, knocks Gemini off. Very exciting business for Rick Hurst, but then again on the other side of the ledger. No mean feat for Carl Allen either. Here, just a half second before impact, we get a shot from the helmet cam as Carl Allen is taking on the monstrous Titan. And here we see the velocity and the strength of the collision. Carl able, able to knock off the bigger man. Now the question, Three, can they go two for two? two. Laser has one. now replaced Titan, and Gemini is still up. <laughs> Carl Allen working against him, and both men go two for two again. Something of a surprise. I don't think we thought Rick Herbst would be able to knock off any of the gladiators. He's two for two. Well, it looks to me that determination pays off as well as strength and speed. Carl gets a yell and knocks Gemini off, and Laser, with his good center of gravity, is knocked off nonetheless by Rick. Carl doing it all with a very sore ankle. Third and final attempt coming up. Laser gets on top of the pedestal. His partner, Titan, doing the same thing. It would appear at this point, Mike, that this is a definite mismatch, Rick versus Titan. But then again, both gladiators are very determined to stay on the pedestal this round. Carl working against Laser, Rick against Titan. Here they come. Laser hangs on, but Titan cannot. And Rick Herbst has gone three for three. He earns the bonus point of one for a total of ten. I can't say that I'm not totally surprised. Right here you can see Laser is able to maintain his balance on the one foot right at the end of the pedestal. 
Whereas Rick unbelievably clobbers tight, and despite his holding on and tearing off, Rick's jersey is knocked off nonetheless. Rick, the hazards of performing in the human cannonball, but you pulled it off. You got the hat trick, three for three, and you've taken a two-point lead over Carl Allen. I don't know what to say. Uh, I just thank the good Lord I'm still uh, whole. These guys are big. They're tough. It's going to come down to the final event, the Eliminator. You've heard of giving up the body. This is called giving up the jersey. Well done. Good luck in that final event. Well, Rick Herbst is a swing better than Carl Allen, and as a result, takes a 19 to 17 lead after six events. And Todd, as the women now prepare for Breakthrough and Conquer, Gina Harrison holds a seven-point lead over Joni Podesta, a margin she's had for the last four events. Joni's up first. And now in the Breakthrough part of the event, Joni, with the football tucked under her arm, will have to take on Lace. And if she was successful or not successful, she will have to attack Zap in the Conquer portion. First job, though, to get by Lace. All she has to do is cross oh, that ready? goal line without being tackled or knocked out of bounds. Here comes Lace trying to go low, but Joni just runs her over. Kind of a Larry Zonka thing. Lowered that forearm and took her on. And now the object in Conquer knocked any portion of the Gladiator's body outside that circle. She's got 10 seconds to do it. And any part of the body is exactly the operative word there, Mike. It appeared that we're pulling on some really unique parts, but she was able to get her outside the ring. <laughs> <laughs> right here, Mike. You can see that uh, Zap's doing a great job of keeping the lower body down. And right at that point, uh-oh, all of a sudden, as you say, indiscretion might have been the better part of Valor. And Zap goes down and outside the ring. So Joni Podesta able to get 10 points in the breakthrough and conquer. She's a little bit tougher than you thought. And incidentally, uh, she did was able to push you outside the ring. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to body slam. And that's one of my fortes. Joni, congratulations. You earned a couple more points. Well done. Lace's fans now await the battle between her and Gina Harrison. Gina tucked the football under her arm, all set to go. Doesn't quite make enough of a move, and Lace is able to take her down, much to the delight of the crowd. Now here she is, part of Conquer. Todd, Lace very impressive. She puts her body in front of any oncoming object. It doesn't matter how big. Gina will try to do the same thing now to Zap, who's awfully tough inside that Conquer circle. Zap's lower body strength appears to be just a little bit too much for Gina. She stays in the middle and is able to be victorious. Now, while both Lace and Zap go over and take their bows, and oh my, losing a little hair as well, we see why Gina was not successful. Need to make a little bit of a move on Lace as she pulls her down, much to the light of both Zap and Lace. So you don't have to resort to the body slam? Uh, no, she was good. She's a good wrestler, but um, she's tall and I had to get down and stay down. And stay low. She's so tall. I got the leverage. All right, Lace, you're a lot tougher than a lot of people are led to believe. Uh, you have a, an amazing capacity to put yourself in front of danger. In this case, uh, speeding contenders who weigh a little bit more than you do. Yeah, both of them have uh, several pounds on me, Michael. But uh, as you can see, I take care of business when it comes to the field. <laughs> are, are the are the women's gladiators this time around a little more inspired by all of this? <laughs> you guys are very tough. Zap and Lace. By shutting Gina out, the Gladiators do Joni a favor, and as a result, Joni Podesta takes her first lead in the preliminary competition, 30 to 27. When we come back, it's our final event, the Eliminator. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood for our final event called the Eliminator. It all begins right here, where our contenders will compete side by side and roll these balls up the ramp. From there, they'll have to cross this balance beam where the gladiators will be trying to knock the contenders off with medicine balls. And then the fun really begins. A set of commando lines have to be negotiated. From there, it's across a barrier and the swing for life. And then a decision has to be made. Which corridor to take? Behind three of those stars stand gladiators. Now here's Mike with our men's contenders. This men's preliminary round between Rick Herbst and Carl Allen has come down to the final event, appropriately enough, called the Eliminator. Rick has a two-point lead on Carl, but should Carl win by more than a second, he goes on to the quarterfinals. Rick, your strategy coming down to this final event? Just give it my best shot, you know, try not to get hit off the beam and uh, try to move as quickly through it as I can. Carl, ever since the first event, Powerball, the whole rest of American Gladiators, at least this preliminary round, has been a gut check for you. How's the ankle? Still pretty good. It feels all right. There's a little pain involved. Um, we're going to have an x-ray after this is finished. I just want to get it over with and give my best shot. Carl, Rick, best of luck. Let's start the Eliminator. You'll get ready and then the whistle. 
The Eliminator is different from all past events in that points are doubled. Two points are awarded for each second under the one minute time limit. And right off the bat, we see that Rick is having a big trouble with the ball, Mike. And that will cost him in penalty points. Carl Allen trying to stay in that balance beam with that sore ankle and does not. Rick also goes into the pit. But both men clamber back up onto the platform, and now it's across the commando lines. I'm surprised that Carl's able to negotiate these as well as he is with his ankle. That's got to be causing him a great deal of pain right at this point. Again, the added weight of 200 pounds might be a disadvantage as well. Rick has the lead. Remember, Carl needs to win by more than a second to advance to the quarterfinal round. It could be decided right here. Rick caught up with Nitro. Carl goes through clean, but was it enough? Mike, I don't have the watch in front of me. I'm not exactly sure because it appeared that Rick was way ahead, but he was unable to negotiate Nitro. Here he busts through with good momentum, but he gets caught between the plexiglass and Nitro and is unable to spin away. Conversely, Carl gets through unscathed. Very fortunate for Carl Allen. Carl Allen, he needed to win the eliminator by one second. He did that. Rick Herb's problem, he was assessed 10 points in penalties, and that ultimately cost you, partner. It cost me. I hope, uh, hopefully, that I'll have enough points to advance, though. Uh, I might not be out yet. Quite possibly that could happen. What was the toughest section of the eliminator for you? Well, I had a more problem with that large roll and that large ball up that uh, angle than I thought I would, and I lost it. Somebody hit me pretty good in the gut with one of them balls, and uh, that hurt me. You gave us a great effort, though. Carl, I didn't think you were going to make it there for a while. You looked like uh, Grandpappy Amos and the real McCoys, the way you limped up the... Uh, ramp there. I didn't think I was going to make it either. I don't know. Um, it was tough. It was really tough. I didn't think I'd finish as good as I did. I was in a gladiator den and it uh, helped me out a lot. I really did. You're very experienced in the martial arts. Were you able, because of that experience, able to block out some of the pain? <laughs> no way. <laughs> Not at all. There was just too much pain. It started way before I even got the aspirin and stuff that was necessary to calm the pain down. Carl gets some ice on it, elevated tonight, and we'll see you in the quarterfinals. Congratulations. Well, pain or no, Carl Allen comes out on top by the score of 37 to 27. And now it's the women's turn with Joni Podesta leading Gina Harrison by a mere three points. Going into the final event for women, the eliminator, Joni Podesta has a three-point lead over Gina Harrison. Gina, to advance to the quarterfinals, you need to win this event by more than two seconds. Your strategy coming in. Except you told me earlier that you never have any strategies. You just do it. Just do it. Just go after it. I'm, I'm hoping that I get a good start because uh, that'll carry me through. I, I feel good about the ropes and the rest of it. So this is where the focus is for me. Joni, during some of the practice sessions, I know you were able to experience. Uh, what did you find to be the biggest problem with the eliminator? The fact that the gladiators are throwing those little balls at us, I think. Those balls are not so small. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Got to stay away from those. You two, have, you two have put on a great exhibition so far. It's been nip and tuck. May the best woman win. The Eliminator, go to it. All right, ladies. Ready? Gina in the red, Joni in the blue. Up the ramp they go. Joni gets there first. Gina loses her shoe. This is going to be tough going now, trying to get out across that balance beam with just one shoe. Your traction's tough enough as it is. Oh, took a medicine ball right in the face. That's a tough blow right there for Gina Harrison. Undaunted, she gets back up as Joni has a healthy lead. I think Joni's well aware of the fact that she's ahead. She's taking her time, being very careful now as she heads to the swing for life. Now keep in mind that a high score in the loser's bracket could also advance Gina, so it's important that she not give up. Well, knowing Gina, that's the last thing she's going to do is Joni heads to the end. Looks like she's going to take on Lace. Good contact, and she makes it across. Now here comes Gina, shoeless, busts through, <laughs> but makes it through okay. You can tell that Joni's very happy, and son of a gun, so is Gina. Happy to be in one piece, no doubt. And now here's that crucial piece of equipment that she lost, and I believe that Mike's found it. Haven't you, Mike? This is the casualty of going through the Eliminator. You lost your shoe right from the get-go, and you never had a chance. It's amazing, folks. She still has a smile. Maybe your point total will be good enough to go on to the quarterfinals. And you have done it. You've advanced. Yeah, it was so uh, tough. I just kept my focus on the balance beam and ran like heck and kept low. And at the end, there was a gladiator waiting for you, unfortunately. I know. I don't even know who that was. Who was that? 
Lace. <laughs> Lace isn't going to let you forget it, Joni. Congratulations on going on to the quarterfinals. For Joni Podesta, it was far from clear sailing, but more than enough to get her by Lace and on to the quarterfinals with a 54-31 win over Gina Harrison. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood. Here's a preview of what to expect next week on The American Gladiators. Next week, the competition continues as four new contenders step up to challenge the American Gladiators. Lucian Anderson from Indianapolis, Jim Brady from Ohio, Bridget Venturi from Illinois, and Suzanne Rampey from Los Angeles. Be with us as they go head-to-head -head against Lace, Nitro, Blade, Zap, and the rest of the American Gladiators. That's it for this edition of American Gladiators. For Todd Christensen, I'm Mike Emily. So long, and we'll see you next week. Hollywood. This is American Gladiator. Selected from a national athletic search, 22 men and women have come to Hollywood to wage battle against our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators champion. Now here are your American Gladiators, Nitro, Blake, Blade, Gemini, Titan, Zap, Gold, Laser, your American Gladiator. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley, and his co-host, Todd Christensen. Welcome to this second edition of American Gladiators, and as you know, our contenders are selected from around the country. We know that they are very athletically gifted, and they're going against some of the biggest and baddest gladiators that we could possibly assemble. Todd, you've been through many Raider training camps. If you were a contender, how would you prepare for these seven events? Well, I know one thing. I want a piece of those two right there. I'd want a piece <laughs> of them right now, right here, right... You want... Oh, oh, you, don't think, want you don't want none of this I think, I think we can arrange you that. Of, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> All right, let's meet our contenders for this preliminary round. In the women's competition, please welcome Suzanne Rampe of Hermosa Beach, California, a stunt woman. And her opponent, Bridget Venturi from Highland Park, Illinois, the Chicago Board Options Trader. In the men's preliminary, please welcome Lucian Anderson of Indianapolis, an actor-dancer. And his opponent, Jim Brady from Grove City, Ohio, a gunnery sergeant with the U.S. Marine Corps. Contenders, best of luck. They're Todd, they're smiling now, but I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't know either, but it looks pretty good. They look excited. Okay, let's get it on. Yeah. Briefly, this is how the competition works. 20 men and women contenders competing in a variety of events, seven to be exact, against the American Gladiators. Their mission to score as many points as they can during these preliminary rounds and advance to the quarterfinals. Their ultimate goal, to make it to the championship finals. And at stake, pride, prestige, and $10,000. First up in the joust competition is Lucian Anderson, a former exotic dancer and playgirl cover person. He'll be competing against Gunnery Sergeant Jim Brady from Grove City, Ohio. 
And in the joust, Lucian will draw a nitro. And don't let the fact that he was a former Chippendales dancer fool you. He was also a two-time state Indiana arm wrestling champion. Step back. Once again, there's a 30-second time limit. And quickly, Nitro goes to work with four or five quick shots. That's a stick. Oh, no, that's uncalled for. That didn't have to happen. Lucian's going to be the winner. Right here from the overhead cam, you can see that one big right swipe and the Puget Stick comes right out of Nitro's hand. And in frustration, he grabs Lucian's stick and pushes him to the mat. Lucian had got nasty up there. Yeah, real quick, uh, he got in real fast on me, but we both got a, got a little bit off balance, and I don't know, I guess, I don't know what the verdict is, but then he got a little, little out of hand at the end, but Powerball's coming up, so it doesn't matter. So you're not going to forget about him? Nitro looked like about halfway through you lost your stick. What happened up there? I kind of lost my gripping on the stick. I didn't appreciate the way he kept swinging at me. We don't want to lose your composure up there. We don't want this to get personal, do we? It's always personal. You heard it here. Not exactly a display of good sportsmanship as Nitro sends Lucian flying, but as Lucian told us, he won't forget. All right, it's Gunnery Sergeant Jim Brady's turn. These pugil sticks that the contenders and gladiators use very much like those used in the Marine Corps, so it would seem that Jim Brady might have the advantage here. But you know, Mike, he's still giving away close to 40 or 50 pounds to Nitro, and right now Nitro's physicality has put Jim to one knee, and he isn't able to get up. In fact, he just got knocked down. Oh, now that... Oh! Now he knocks him off. It's going to be interesting to see how the judge decides this, because obviously Nitro went to the other platform, but he did get knocked down, but Jim Brady never got up from one knee. Right here we see that he's just about to fall off, but he holds on. He has one hand off the pugil stick, and right there you see that Nitro crosses, which of course is immediate disqualification. But it's up for the judges to decide. Well, unless you're a fan of Nitros, and I know there's a lot of you out there, this decision may not be a popular one because our Marine Jim Brady has been disqualified. The ruling, Jim, is that once you have been down to a knee on the pedestal, you must make an attempt to get back up, and apparently the referee did not say that as the case, so uh, disqualification. Your thoughts? Oh, he got me off balance, and that's the only way I could defend myself up in that position. That's what the referee says. That's what I've got to go with. Well, one thing we know about Marines, they'll never quit, so we'll see you back again in one of these other preliminary events, okay? Definitely a couple of controversial decisions in our opening joust as Lucian Anderson jumps out to the quick lead over Jim Brady by the count of 10 to nothing. Coming up next, it's the ladies' turn in the joust, so stay tuned to American Gladiators. Welcome back to the women's first event in this preliminary round, the joust, and our contenders, Bridget Venturi, 23 years old, from Highland Park, Illinois. She'll be going against Suzanne Rompe, 25 years old, and a professional stunt woman. Suzanne will be up first in the event, going against Lace, and it would appear that from this vantage point that Suzanne's height advantage will be something that Lace will not be able to overcome, but it remains to be seen. A couple of good blows by Lace. One blow to the head by Suzanne, and down she goes, and Suzanne exults. It appears her size is just a little bit too much for Lace in this particular competition. Right here, we see the big left to the head, and down Lace goes. Prior to the preliminaries, I saw you walking around, and you looked sort of like the shy, retiring type, not the type of person who gets up on a pedestal and, and gets himself or herself involved in a joust. Uh. That, a lot of people think that. Yeah, that happens to me all the time with my work, too. Is that one of your strengths as an athlete? I think so. I think so. As long as it doesn't get onto the other side where they get too pumped up going, oh, God, we can just beat her, where I can use it to my advantage. Here's a, here's a person who works as a professional stunt woman. You specialize in cars and fires. Now can we add joust to that list? <laughs> I guess so. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> Suzanne Rampe. So stunt woman Suzanne was able to gain 10 points in the joust, and now it's an opportunity for an options trader from Highland Park, Illinois, by the name of Bridget Venturi to try her trade against Lace in the joust. Bridget, more than just an options trader, she was an all Big Ten softball player at position. the University of Michigan. Step back. Bridget, clearly the early aggressor with three direct shots to the head of Lace. Lace fires back in retaliation, and look there, Bridget crosses across to Lace's pedestal. She has been disqualified, and that is it. Lace the winner. You're tough that time around. 
Oh, ran a little mas mascara there, but it's time to take care of business with American Gladiators. And we're here to give you a good show, some good sports, and lots of fun. You look like you're going to the body a lot. Was that planned? Well, I couldn't see her most of the time. She was hitting me so hard on the right side. I just kept, uh, kept back with the pugil stick as, uh, oh, as only a gladiator can. Well, you waxed for your revenge. You got it. Bridget, you were an all-Big Ten player in softball. Uh, any parallels between swinging a pugil stick and a bat? I'm used to hitting a little round white thing, not a human being. It was a little different. And they don't hit back either, the balls. Keep that smile on your face. There's six more events to go. Thanks. All right. And here's another look at Lace's come from behind victory, so to speak, as Bridget goes flying. And Suzanne takes an early 10-point lead after the first event, the job. Now here's Todd with an explanation of what's coming up next. You know, if you're a Sir Edmund Hillary fan, you're going to love this next event. This 32-foot jungle gym is entitled The Wall, and two competitors are going to try to scale this thing in the two-minute time limit. But it's not going to be that easy. Ten seconds after they begin, they're going to have some gladiators who are going to pursue after them. And they're going to try to get their body weight off of that wall. If they do so, they will not score any points. But, of course, the first one to reach the top would receive ten, and the second would receive five. In the event that neither were to scale the summit, the one who got closest to the top would receive... A Five points. Jim and I here may look like Captain Video, but in actuality, what he's wearing is a protective helmet for one. Should he, uh, the harness give way and he fall down, but that won't happen. But this contraption on top is a terminal for this camera. And what we're going to be able to do is give you a bird's eye view of what it's like for the gladiator chasing the contender up this mountain. And I think it ought to give you a pretty good idea of what you're going to see. Well, now after one event, you see that Lucian Anderson holds a 10-point lead over Jim Brady. Jim Brady now determined to get up the wall, but he is going to be trailed by Laser. Whereas Lucian, on the other side, will be trailed by our Captain Video, alias All right, Gemini. All right, we're here. Ready? And then the whistle. Here we go. Ready? And once again, the contender's given a 15-second head start. It's Jim Brady in the red, Lucian Anderson in the blue, both scrambling their way, hopefully, to the top of this wall. And Lucian Anderson is doing his Spider-Man imitation right about now. He is really scaling up that wall quickly as now the Gladiators will pursue them. Todd, if there's such a thing as a bad draw, it would be Jim Brady drawing Laser because Laser, with mountain climbing experience, is very, very tough. Brady trying to keep ahead of him. Mikey's doing a pretty good job right at this point, but, he's, but right now he's struggling a little bit with his feet. And now Jim is indeed closing in, and he's got him by the shoelace, it appears. Now he's got him by the ankle, and sure enough, he pulls him off. And just as he pulls him off, Lucian is able to scale the summit. So it appears that that's going to be another 10 points for Lucian in this event. And now he is shutting out Jim by the count of 20 to nothing. Now here's Mike with Laser and Jim. Jim, if it wasn't for bad luck, you'd have no luck at all. Talk about shoestring catches. He, that's how he got you down. He sure did. Laser was very fast, and I could feel him tugging on my shoelace. I didn't know what he was grabbing on. Did you run out of a little steam? I mean, you, the first 30 seconds, whew, you were three-quarters of the way up there. No, I was trying to play it safe and not fall off. And uh, once you get to where I was at, it's smooth sailing. And next thing I know, someone's tugging on my, tugging on my foot. So things aren't going too good so far. They'll get better. Laser, once again, you proved that this is your specialty. Yeah, well, we had a lot of time to practice on it. Uh, he's a good contender. Uh, we're the American Gladiators, and we're the chosen few. We're here to stay. You bet. Well done. You know, Lucian, it seems to me that a lot of this has to do with hand strength. And, of course, as a former wrist wrestler, that seems to have been something that uh, would be your forte. Um, well, towards the top, yeah, I, I just use a little hand strength. But a lot, of, a lot of the climbing involves your legs. So you have to make sure you keep your legs under you and as well having good hand and arm strength. All right, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. I'm going to need it. This looks tough. Tough and good enough to open up a commanding lead over Jim Brady after two events. Now, Suzanne Rompe leads Bridget Venturi by 10 going into the wall. Suzanne will be chased by gold, while Bridget will have, let's see, who's on her tail. There she is, Blaze. This is a good chance for Bridget to make up some ground, but quite frankly, Mike, I don't think she's necessarily built for this event. You'd think that being tall at 5'10 would help her, but again, that 150-plus pounds is going to be Ready? tough as you head up that wall. And unlike the men's wall, our female contenders here will be given a 10-second head start as opposed to a 15-second head start. Suzanne Rompe in the blue, Bridget Venturi in the red. 
And here come the Gladiators up the wall going after him. Blaze is off to a pretty good start. Trailing Bridget. But it looks like Suzanne has a pretty good gap between herself and Gold. Again, each of the contenders as well as the Gladiators rigged in safety harnesses for protection should they fall off the face of that wall. Suzanne, however, looking in pretty good shape at this point. It looks like she's just got a little ways to go to make it all the way to the top. I think she's going to be able to do it. Because Bridge is struggling a little bit right here on the left. And Blaze right now has her by the ankle. And sure enough, pulls her off just as Suzanne gets to the top. And Suzanne more than a little pleased with herself, and deservedly so, in one of the more difficult events here in the Gladiator competition. Right here we see Bridget losing her balance as Blaze is able to pull her off the wall. Suzanne, why do I get the feeling that somehow, somewhere, you've done this before, or a variation thereof? No, I really haven't. I've, I, when I first looked at this wall, I'm going, people do this for fun? <laughs> but actually, once you do it, it's, it's enjoyable because it's a, something to do. I mean, it's, you want to conquer it. It's neat. You, you have a little bit of uh, mountain lion in you, I believe. What is the secret to this, climbing the face of the wall? Short nails. Short nails, and the best part is obviously coming down in the harness. <laughs> well, I like that part. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. So like her male counterpart, Lucian, Suzanne takes 10 points away from the wall, as well as a commanding lead in this woman's preliminary event. But there are plenty of events left for Jim and Bridget to make up ground, including Breakthrough and Conquer and the Human Cannonball. Coming up next, it's Powerball. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where Todd Christensen is standing by with an explanation of our next event on American Gladiators. Now, if you're someone who is into 45 seconds of controlled mayhem, this is the game for you. It's called Powerball. And the object is for two participants at either end to come and score as many times as they can in these buckets. The four outside buckets are one point apiece and the one in the middle is worth two points. Of course, it's not going to be as easy as all of that because there's going to be a hindrance. Three American gladiators. And after two events, Lucian Anderson with a 20-point lead over Jim Brady. Needless to say, Brady's got to come through here. And I think he can. I think the tendency, the human element, is to double-team the larger man. I really think that, and I think that Jim is going to be able to sneak some points in here as a result of Lucian being a former football player. And right off the bat, Jim Brady gets some points. And Jim Brady gets double-teamed. Lucian gets knocked out of bounds by Titan. We should mention that Jim Brady, also a fairly good football player himself, while uh, in the Marine Corps. Ooh, nice little move there, and he's able to get the bucket. And Lucian seems to be struggling a little bit. I don't know if he's limping or what. That stiff arm to Titan he didn't buy as he shoves him clear into the stands. Now, Jim, there's only one guy. Now be the time to take advantage, but he's not able to. Again, a 45-second clock here. Both men running out of steam. It is a tough go to go that long and that hard. No doubt about it. People seem to think that 45 seconds would be no problem, but it is a problem cardiovascular and strength-wise. And thankfully for Lucian Anderson and Jim Brady, they are happy to have that little respite. Again, some of the sweet moves displayed by our gunnery sergeant, Jim Brady. Mike, I can't help but think that they're not doing this sort of thing in the Marines. I got a feeling that maybe Jim's out there on his own practicing, even though he wouldn't want to admit it. That's a nice little move he had there on Gemini. And right here, he fakes out laser to once again get it in the basket, right by Gemini too. Now watch Gemini trying to prevent him. Look at this vertical leap, but to no avail, Jim Brady sneaks it in the receptacle for a point. If you polled most of the people in the audience here, I think, uh, Jim Brady, you were the underdog against uh, Lucian Anderson, but you pulled it off. It's a good feeling. I'm, I needed to get some points. Finally got some. Made my luck will start to change. Never underestimate a Marine? That, that could be true. It is true. Those are three tough hombres out there. And they were. I was lucky to get a first step most of the time. And every once in a while, I'd follow Lucian. But I should have got one or two in the middle. I didn't concentrate enough on the middle. I was pretty satisfied. Jim, congratulations. And as you said, you're finally on the scoreboard. Thank you. Well done. Jim Brady. We're here with about 750 pounds worth of gladiator muscle, but I'd have to say, to be honest with you, I don't think these three are very satisfied. Jim and I, what happened out there this last bout? Well, I think it was an inability for us to channel our energies properly. We chased them instead of staying in our zones. I think if we'd have stayed in our zone, zones a lot better, we'd have been a, a little more effective. So after three events, Lucian Anderson now leads Jim Brady 21 to 5. 
Coming up next, it's women's Powerball, and Suzanne Rompe is looking to increase her lead over Bridget Venturi. Well, at this point, I think Mike Bridget's just looking to get on the scoreboard. You know, she's been struggling through the first two events, and this is her chance to catch up a little bit. Standing in their way, gold, zap, and blaze the object here. Score as many goals as you can in 45 seconds. Each goal worth one point in the outside cylinders, worth two points in the middle cylinder. Right off the bat, Bridge is a little bit unlucky as you can't get that one into the receptacle. She cuts to the left and, ooh, gold. Good shot there. Little form and 360 by Suzanne looking good. While Bridges on the other end getting double teamed. Nonetheless, she scores. Both Bridget and Suzanne, deceptive athletes. I think uh, they have both caught the Gladiators off guard by some of their athleticism. And some similar physiques as well. I think that the Gladiators have a little bit of a problem because all three of them seem to be in the same area, Mike. It's going to be a very, very close match, and it appears that maybe both contenders are running out of a little steam here. Why not? They've been pummeled, pounded, and just about everything else here. Well, they are looking a little bit gassed, looking a little bit tired may come down to who can score one last goal. Neither woman does. Suzanne wins it by a single cone. Bridget, you finally got on the scoreboard, but it wasn't easy. It looked like you had some collisions out there. How'd it feel? Yeah, it felt pretty good. Finally, a uh, little one-on-one -on -one combat. That's what I've been waiting for. We we'll still have a lot to go. Yeah, that's right. There is a lot to go, and you got quite a margin to make up some 21 points. Can you do it? No problem. No problem. All right. A lot of confidence here. We'll see. I like Bridget's attitude above all else. Stay positive. She lost this event to Suzanne and now trails after three events, 25 to 4. Now in the men's competition after three events, Lucian Anderson with a healthy lead over Jim Brady. Going into event number four, the assault. In this event, Mike, our contenders have 60 seconds to hit a target placed above our gladiators with a variety of weapons. First up is the crossbow. At safe area number two, there is a rocket launcher. If a contender misses there, they can continue to the third zone where there is a cannon. Safe area number four affords a pistol. And if all else fails, three hand grenades are left as a final resort. But we make it sound like all you have to do is shoot the guns, but in reality, probably the most difficult part is to dodge these 100 mile an hour tennis balls that will be shot out of the gun by Nitro. And believe me, this is one event that Nitro enjoys because he fancies himself as some sort of modern-day rifleman. And Todd, I'll tell you what, if Gunnery Sergeant Jim Brady doesn't do well in this event, he's really going to hear from his buddies in the Corps. Yeah, this should definitely be his event, but then again, I'm not sure he's an expert at the crossbow, as we just found out. <laughs> right here, he's kind of doing a hesitating, kind of a cha-cha. Fred Astaire said, you know, Mike, I'm surprised at his ability with those feet. Where did that come from? Well, he's a very well-rounded athlete. Brown belt in karate. He was an outstanding football player in the Marine Corps. Displaying some of those neat feet. He just needs to display a little bit better with the guns right now. It's a <laughs> struggle, isn't it? Again, the contender's working against the clock. Brady running out of a time, and he knows it. But, of course, Nitro knows it as well, and he's going to be focusing all the tennis balls right into that one area. And look how much closer it is and how much tougher it's going to be to dodge. Oh, right there. Sure enough, he caught it on the side, and Jim Brady knows it. Very disappointing he couldn't get in those last grenades for a shot at 7 or 10 points. Right here on the replay as he cocks his right hand, sure enough, the tennis ball catches Gunnery Sergeant Jim Brady on the thigh, much to the delight of Nitro. So Jim Brady misses a golden opportunity to make up ground on Lucian Anderson. Lucian Anderson, of course, obviously can take advantage of what just happened to Jim. With the hook slide, he's about set with the crossbow. Long distance. Remember, if he hits the white area, that's 10 points. If he hits the red area, that is 7. Takes his time and just misses. Oh, but right there, he catches it on the left leg. Cut across, he wasn't looking. A nitro, sure shot that he is, got him. Lucian's obviously a little bit disappointed because he figured after Gunnery Sergeant Jim Brady was eliminated that this was a chance to get some easy points, but not so. As Nitro, sure enough, catches him on the left hip. Right there, you can see Lucian a little bit disappointed. Tell the truth, Nitro, you paid for these people to behind you. Hey, you don't have a... You guys this? That's what it's about. It makes it great to be a gladiator with fans like them. Admit it, you don't have a fan in the world. <laughs> Either you love me or you hate me, but if you hate me, you love to hate me. One thing's for certain, you are uh, bad news with that tennis cannon. 
Well, Mike, as you know, I take everything 100% serious and everything I'm 100% intense because win, win, win is the name of the game, and that's what I like to do. Don't forget, these contenders have long memories. They're out gunning for you as well. Keep on your toes. Uh, you know what I say. Good luck. Pack a lunch. It's going to be a long day. Well, Nitro certainly made it a long day for both Jim and Lucian in the assault event. And now after four events, the score remains the same. Lucian 21 and Jim 5. Welcome back with more of the American Gladiators. For the women after three events, Suzanne Rampe has a healthy lead over Bridget Venturi. She's up first in the game of assault. Bridget definitely needs to make some move here. I mean, despite her confidence being down by 21 points, this is going to be no cakewalk these next few events. She needs to score high here. She's obviously taking the tack, but less is more. She's not taking much time to aim. She just wants to get through the event and see if she can guarantee herself four points. Well, it's too bad they don't get points for just hitting the uh, area where the gladiator's at because she hit Lace in that protective shield she has. Unfortunately, Lace hit her first. And Lace wanted to get her back, obviously. She caught her right on the side as she was cutting across. Head down, not looking up. Lace was able to have a free shot and sure enough, caught her right on the right hip. So Suzanne Rompe can put a little more distance between her and Bridget with a good performance here. But the eyes of Lace are any indication, I'm not so sure. She looks very intense. She definitely wants to shoot down Suzanne Rompe. Suzanne looks a little bit intimidated as that shot from the crossbow was nowhere near close. I think she was just happy to get that shot off in the process. She has skipped the second safe area and has now moved on to where the pistol awaits. I'm not sure that she knows that yet. She's got the pistol she's going to shoot anyway. And now I wonder what she's going to Well, she is going to head back. She's going to start running. Borrowing a page from Richard Seymour, the roll of dope, and it cost her, Todd. <laughs> it cost her indeed. It's a 100 mile an hour tennis ball. Caught her right on the backside. Sure enough, take a curtsy, Lace. Suzanne, did you realize that you went to the wrong station, safety area first? Uh, yeah, I did after I got there. <laughs> so it wasn't part of your strategy? Not at all. You know what ultimately undid you, didn't, don't you? What? This move like this. That's when you got it in the rear end. Uh, yeah. You're right in the butt. But it looked good. Huh? Looked great on camera. <laughs> oh, well. Better luck next time. Thanks. Okay. Well, despite the funky acrobatics, neither woman did terribly well in this event. And so, after four events, the score remains the same, with Suzanne leading by a 25-4 count. Well, it's the men's turn again, and coming up now, the human cannonball. And this is the view that the contenders will see from their lofty perch, as Lucian Anderson and Jim Brady, our two contenders, get set to go against Laser and Nitro. After four events, there's the standings, Anderson with that hefty lead. Lucian will be taking the first swings at Nitro here, down on one knee, preparing for the event, while Jim Brady will be taking on Laser. And to refresh your memory, each contender given three swings, each successful attempt, worth three points. Score the hat trick, you get a bonus point of one, a total of ten. Well, Lucian sends Nitro flying, but Jim Brady not so fortunate with Laser. Laser's always been tough in this event. He's got that great center of gravity. But here comes Lucian, and Nitro, trying to brace, delivers a blow of his own. But he's back on one foot and can't quite keep his balance, as Lucian was able to knock him off. Well, now Lucian will try to do the very same thing to Titan. He has replaced Laser as Nitro has moved over to face Jim Brady. Attempt number two coming up. Here they go. Titan just a little bit too much. That's a lot of body weight. He's able to crouch down and take Lucian on. But Nitro a little bit disgusted with himself. Here Jim Brady comes in with the elbow, shoulder, brushes Nitro away. Nitro unable to keep his feet set on the pedestal. Well, as we have mentioned many times, this is the one event where the Gladiator is really at a disadvantage. Nitro's mistake there may have been just to try to take on too much of that surface area of the contender. It cost him. You can see the feet getting set in as the gladiators are getting low and hard. Lucian going for the hat trick. Laser on top. Laser staves off his challenge. He did indeed, Mike. I think that Laser has given this a lot of thought. You can see that he braces himself very low, deflects the challenge of Lucian, and is able to maintain his balance. On the other side, the crowd was shocked as Gunnery Sergeant Jim Brady is able to take on Titan, but despite holding on, Titan cannot keep his balance. If there's one event where the contender has a true advantage, it is in human cannonball because of the physics involved here. But, Laser, you managed to go 
not one for three, not two for three, but three for three. Well, I think when you're the best of the best, when you're American Gladiators, you're the best in the world. We're here to compete, and we're going to be the best from now on. You bet. You are the best, but uh, not necessarily invincible. I know you got a little uh, stinger in the shoulder, so get the trainer to take care of it. Well, Mike, gladiators are human, too. And now after five events, we see that Jim has narrowed Lucian's lead by a count of 24 to 11. On the women's side, after four events, Suzanne still holds a prohibitive lead over Bridget Venturi. And Zap on hand to offer some encouragement to her fellow gladiators. They're ready, and so are the contenders. Here's Todd with Bridget Venturi. Bridget, uh, you need a lot of ground to make up in this particular event. You got a chance of going three for three? Uh, sure do. I'm just going to test the laws of physics, see what happens. You mean it can get that scientific? You really figured it out? Uh, I've got it all figured out. Yeah, I had a computer programming running. Wow, I'm impressed. Don't share it with the rest of them, right? Oh, not at all. No way. Okay, good luck. Thanks. And Bridget will get a chance to test her theory against Lace, while Suzanne Rampey goes against Blaze. This is the first of three attempts. All right, ladies. Three, two, one. Here they go. Bridget wasted no time. I mean, she sent Lace flying. But granted, she has quite a weight advantage over Suzanne Rompey. I think that little yell had something to do with it as well, Todd. Definitely, and Lace is going off the platform very quickly. Bridget's off to a good start. Zap now on top of the pedestal. She's bracing herself against Suzanne Rompey. And that's exactly what she did. Now she's made Suzanne go 0 for 2, while on the other side of the ledger, Bridget has now got 2 for 2. I think the yell has something to do with it. Well, it's, it intimidates the gladiators. It's, you? it's a little like a yell and a little like Michael Jordan with his tongue hanging out. Yeah, that's kind of her signature. And of course, she is from the outskirts of Chicago. Maybe that does have something to do with it. Okay, one last chance for both contenders. For Bridget to get the hat trick, she's gonna definitely going to have to earn it because she's going against Zap. Suzanne is hoping just to get one out of three at this point to salvage a little bit from this particular event. Three, two, one. Well, believe it or not, Suzanne went 0 for 3. Bridget, 3 for 3, the hat trick. And another look at what is fast becoming Bridget's trademark, the primal scream. And how would you like to be Zap? Here's the view from Bridget's helmet cam. Look out. Down she goes. I must say there's something to be said for idle promises because, you know, out in this competition there's a lot of big talk, but you backed it up. You went three for three. Are you willing to let us in now on your secret? Well, for all you out there who might not know, Zap is human. It's been proved. Well, that's right. You proved her human, but we're all excited about the fact that somewhere in the physics or the computer brain that you have up there, you were able to figure this out. Are you willing to let us in on the secret? Well, Todd, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you, so I better not. Kind of a Mission Impossible thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's got me kind of frightened. I, I better let that one go. Mike, you got Zap. What do you think? Well, Todd, I think these contenders are getting a little chippy, especially Bridget. Zap, uh, you did have a great overall track record there, and she just happened to knock you off. Actually, yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, the, the crowd was with me this time, and I think what, her, what got me was Bridget's uh, Tarzan yell. I went, ah! It just threw me off. I was looking at it and went, oh. So no sophisticated That's computer new. program as Tarzan yell is what it was. And that, it, that was good for her and it worked, so, yeah. I think she has a little bit of naivete uh, working for her right here because she doesn't realize that there are more events to follow that you have to encounter her at. Yeah, we'll see her in the wrestling ring. Okay, you heard it. Get ready, Bridget. So Bridget's Tarzan imitation earns her 10 points to Suzanne's goose egg in the human cannonball. Hence, the women's score after five events has narrowed it to Suzanne 25 and Bridget 14. Still to come on American Gladiators, The Eliminator. But up next, Breakthrough and Conquer. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood as we get ready for event number six for the men, Breakthrough and Conquer. And after five events, Lucian Anderson leads Jim Brady 24 to 11. And Mike, Jim Brady has the unenviable task of first taking on Titan in the breakthrough part of the Breakthrough and Conquer competition. Afterwards, he will be taking on Laser. And as you can see right there, 
Titan doesn't look too worried or afraid. Jim Brady tried some fancy moves in Powerball. They worked. That one didn't. Titan squared himself up and did a good job knocking Jim out of bounds. Now on to Laser in the Conquer Circle. And Laser does a good job of staying right in the middle. He's not giving him anything to get a hold of. Doing a good job of keeping him on the ground, keeping him away from outside that circle. Laser's tough. There's the 10 second time limit. Jim Brady gets shut out in Breakthrough and Conquer. And there you get the Bash Brothers handshake from both Titan and Laser as they prepare now for Lucian Anderson, who now has to feel pretty good as he has a chance now to pick up five points in either part of the competition. But it's not going to be in the breakthrough part as Titan was waiting for him. Lucian has 10 seconds to knock any part of Laser's body outside of that ring. Right there, the single leg takedown might have worked, but Laser did a good job of keeping him off balance, and sure enough, it's a shutout for Zip. I give the Gladiators credit, they were tough. And another bash just for good measure. So now after six events, the score remains the same, with Lucian up by a count of 24-11. Now heading into the women's event after five events, Bridget has narrowed the gap. As the difference is only 11 points, so Bridget has to feel pretty good about herself heading now into the Breakthrough and Conquer. First, she'll be taking on Blaze, and then in the Conquer Circle, the Tough Zap. Going for the necktie tackle there. Blaze knocks Bridget out of bounds, so no points there. I don't know how legal that is, Todd. A little clothesline right there. There's, I suppose if she had a face mask, they might have called it, but you got to let that go. That's tough. It's part of the game. Final chance here for Bridget to pick up five points. Zap has been one tough customer inside that ring, but she did it. In the final second before the whistle blew, Bridget Venturi gets five points. Bridget, you know, we were kidding about being scientific, but there couldn't be a whole lot of science involved here. It was kind of spontaneous. How'd you feel out there? Well, it felt pretty good in the ring. It's kind of funny. I seem to be doing the best against Zap. <laughs> what, uh, what was the problem during the running part of it? Uh, she just grabbed me around the neck. It's pretty hard to go with a large woman wrapped around your neck. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, good luck in the rest of the competition. Okay, thanks, Todd. Well, one thing's for sure, Zap is primed for a little revenge. I'm not so sure I'd want to be in Suzanne Rompe's shoes at this point. First, however, she has to get by Blaze in the breakthrough. All right, ladies. And despite Blaze's thin exterior, she seems to be a tough customer at this point. Once again, she goes ahead hunting. And referee Bob McAlee has given Suzanne Rompe the five points because of that illegal shot right there. And that was a little bit uh, too much of the rough stuff, Todd. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was something taken right to the head, and you got to take care of the contenders as Zap is want to do right here. Zap is determined to stay in the middle and determined to keep her top on, Mike, <laughs> at this point. And sure enough, the whistle blows, and she body slams it, but she got out before she was able to get the points, I believe. And Zap is very disgruntled at this point. She's not very happy. I wonder what's going through her head. I know I don't want to tangle, tangle with you in that conquer ring, and I'm sure the contenders don't either. You are absolutely special inside of that ring. I enjoy it. Um, but there, you know, there's certain things that we're not allowed to do, but I'm sorry, once the adrenaline goes, I go. And when you got a crowd like this behind you, they make it worthwhile. Well, Mike, I'm going to leave that one alone. Suffice it to say, with one event left, Suzanne still holds an 11-point lead over Bridget, now with a count at 30 to 19. And with one event left, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the Eliminator. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood. We are ready for our final event called the Eliminator. And Todd, what's in store for the contenders? Well, Mike, is the last event of the competition. It's do or die time for those that trail at this point. And it all begins right here, where our contenders will compete side by side and roll these balls up the ramp. From there, they'll have to cross this balance beam where the gladiators will be trying to knock the contenders off with medicine balls. And then the fun begins anew as a set of commando lines have to be negotiated. From there, it's across a barrier and the swing for life. And then a crucial decision has to be made as to which corridor to take. Behind three of those stars stand gladiators. Now here's Mike with our men's contenders. Here's how things stand in this preliminary round between Lucian Anderson and Jim Brady. Jim Brady trails 24 to 11. Essentially what you have to do here in the eliminator is win by six and a half seconds. So I imagine that you're gonna throw caution to the wind. Caution's out the window. It's 
to the wall. Do you know all about commando lines from your Marine Corps training? Is that going to be an advantage in this event? Hopefully it will. We'll see when I get there. Okay. Lucian, you're going to throw caution to the wind or play it safe? Well, I don't know. I'm just going to take it as it comes. Hopefully I won't uh, run in too much trouble. Uh, I just want to get to each obstacle, go over it well, and uh, hopefully I'll finish in front of Jim and advance. Well, through six events, you have both been very tough. Good luck in the Eliminator. Jim Brady and Lucian Anderson. We remind our viewers that there is a one-minute time limit in this particular event, and every second underneath the one-minute time limit, that point is doubled, and they're off. Lucian getting off to a big lead here, but, but Jim is able to catch up a little bit. Now they have to negotiate the medicine balls, and down both of them go. So it's going to be even in terms of penalties, Mike. Lucian, the first man back up the platform, and the first man on the commando lines. Now watch Jim Brady here. This, I guess this is how they used to do it in the Marine Corps. I'm not sure it's necessarily faster because Lucian is, continues to maintain his lead. Across the barrier, on the swing for life he goes. Through the maze of cones, and does he pick the right corner? No way! And Nitro's being extra tough with Lucian, denying him. But it's going to be inevitable. Lucian's going to cross first, and he is going to be victorious. On the other end, Jim Brady has taken a beating. Dogged and determined, he crosses the finish line. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't think this is taxing, take a look at Lucian's face. And the camaraderie established over the competition, well, it just can't be denied. Human interest at its best. Jim Brady lost the Eliminator in his overall point total of 25. He'll have to wait and see to make, if he makes the quarterfinals. But Jim, you, through seven events, you really, really gave us a thrill. Uh, the commando rope was a lot looser than I expected. Uh, well, you, you know, you tried a different technique there that I haven't seen before. You grabbed, you actually used your legs and hands together on the upper line. I was hoping it would work, but no way. I should have went the way I went in practice. Lucian's a heck of an athlete. You've, you've come here, you had your expectations. Now that it's all over, what do you think? I was very surprised at the intensity of the gladiators. How about your Marine Corps buddies back home? They think you're going to get a bit of a ribbing? Oh, I'll get a big time ribbing. Okay, sure. Jim. Nice job. We enjoyed your performance. Lucian, you go on for sure to the quarterfinals, and it was tough out there. Yeah, it was real tough. Uh, the early events went real well for me. That's the only thing that pulled me through. I definitely ran out of gas towards the end of the competition, but I got a couple of days to recoup, and I'll go from there one day at a time. You know, people are going to do a rethink about the toughness of guys who have, at one time in their lives have been Chippendale dancers. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a part of my past that was a good time. And believe it or not, some of the training I did for that helped me out. We had some nice footwork across the balance beam, and I know you have the utmost respect for the American Gladiators. You advanced to the quarterfinals. Congratulations, Lucian Anderson. So while Lucian Anderson enjoys the fruits of his victory in advancing to the next round, our women now get set for their final event. Suzanne with an 11-point lead means that Bridget has to win by five and a half seconds in this her last chance. Bridget in the red, Suzanne in the blue, and Suzanne having all kinds of problems trying to get the ball to the top of the ramp. For some reason, it's either strength or something else she's unable to do it. But Bridget does get knocked off the balance beam, which should give Suzanne some hope. He finally just gives up on the ball and just takes off, slipping a little bit there. Suzanne now trying to make her way across the balance beam. She goes down. That'll cost her in penalty points. Remember, the contenders must complete this eliminator course in one minute or less. Bridget with a healthy lead across the commando line. She goes, and now it's Suzanne's turn. What a story this would be if Bridget advances to the quarterfinals. She has been behind after each and every event, and it looks like now, despite the fact of getting knocked down by Blaze, she crosses the finish line, and she will win. And it's very apparent now that Suzanne will not cross the finish line in less than a minute. Lace impedes her progress as she finally crosses the finish line, but is not good enough. What a story. Bridget Venturi, a come-from-behind victory. You know, you're talking about luck being a lady, and it must, be a friend, must have been a friend of yours because you are able to make it through relatively unscathed, particularly at the end when it appeared that the gladiator was having a hard time getting to the thing, and you ran right through her. Oh, is that right? Well, the only thing I saw was one of those big dudes throwing a medicine ball at me. Once I was past there, I was pretty comfortable. 
Well, now you're going to have a little bit of time to go over your computer and see what's up for the next time around the quarterfinals, right? Yeah, I think I'll be calling my friends at IBM, see what they got up their sleeve. Okay, congratulations <laughs> to you. Thanks, Dad. Thanks. And Bridget, with the good fortune you've experienced today, better make those phone calls collect to your friends at IBM. And so the youngest female contender here, Bridget Venturi, just 23 years old, advances. She'll join Lucian Anderson in the quarterfinals. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood. Here's a preview of next week's edition of American Gladiators. Next week, the competition continues. Four new contenders step up to challenge the American Gladiators. Christine Lakatos of California, Eric Sutton from Michigan, Cheryl Silla from Indianapolis, and John Cueva from Illinois. Be with us as they go head-to-head -head with Nitro, Zap, Gemini, Lace, and the rest of the American Gladiators. That's it for this edition of American Gladiators. For Todd Christensen, I'm Mike Adamley. So long, and we'll see you next week.